Good evening students, we're going to look at the she task. I'm lying back on my couch recording this video on my mobile phone, but you know, being the internet supported future, multiple sources of information technology can be used. Um, I have a whiteboard picture. Here's something I prepared earlier, which I will talk to as I record this video. This will be made available uh, on your OneDrive sites for chemistry and physics. We will likely be interrupted here or there by the sounds of simply being in a house. The first place you should start is always the subject outline. Let's say we're looking at stage two chemistry. Stage two chem subject outline. Go to the site. Um, I want the outline. Twenty twenty one. Open, please. Right. Now the stuff about science as a human endeavor is down the bottom. This is the key stuff here. I think in stage one and two physics and stage two chemistry, of which I'm teaching, all this science as a human endeavor stuff is essentially the same. They might mention the word physics or chemistry somewhere, but at the end of the day, that the language that is used in this area is the same. And it is these, it's about as clear as mud, and that's the thing. People say, should I do this for my she task? Should I do that? Well, the answer is, sure, go ahead. As long as it fulfills the evidence in the rubric, then you can do whatever the hell you want. Stick within the word limit and make sure you cover off in every area that the rubric's looking at. Um, you need to read um, this, this sort of first bit here, science as a human endeavor, um, and just get familiar with the language so that you get an idea of where SACE is going with the whole concept of she. But it comes down to these uh, CC dial letters here. Um, so you've got these elaborations below. And what you do when you talk about the science as a human endeavor is you take some research from the internet and then you connect it with one of these um, concepts and you sort of synthesize you know like where you get in minecraft you add like some things to them box and then you it, it makes something else it's kind of like that you get the the dot points from below one of these letters and you get something from the net what relates to the topic you're doing and you bring it all together and out comes your science as a human endeavor component of your task the um i had a question saying well where's where's the the rubric and the answer is the rubric is on the very last page. It it is no, that's global warming. How did I end up there? Um, assessment scope and requirements. Skip, skip, skip. There it is. The rubric for your subjects on the last page. It's in the subject outline. Well, second last page, I think. Yeah, assessment integrity is on the last page. Um, second last page. Okay, there it is. I'm not going to bother putting up the rubric, if you want to look at it, I'll print you a copy. They're all the things I'm going to assess you on in chemistry, but it's actually the same damn rubric for chemistry and physics. They simply do control F and then replace every time you write chemistry with physics. The rubric itself for stage one and two physics is exactly the same. And it makes sense. You just assess at a stage one level. And then when you step up to next year, you assess at a stage two level. The key thing about the science as a human endeavor task is we're not looking at investigation analysis and evaluation this stuff is prac report stuff de uh, deconstruction and design we're looking at knowledge and application and you can go from the c level which is demonstrates knowledge and understanding of a general range of chemical concepts note use of the term general you can also replace the word chemical with physical um, Whereas up in the A-level, it's deep and broad knowledge of a range of chemical concepts and applies chemical concepts highly effectively in new and familiar contexts. 
whereas down here applies chemical concepts generally effectively in unfamiliar contexts, explores and understands aspects of the interaction between science and society, whereas up here critically explores and understands in depth the interaction between science and society. So when I mark your stuff, I'm looking like, well, have they critically analyzed? Have they explored it with, with criticality, with complex reasoning in mind? Have they analyzed? Have they synthesized information there? Um, and is there depth to the understanding that's demonstrated? That's how I know you're in an A. Otherwise, I mean, based on the, the, the language and the rubric itself, you will fall into one of these areas. And what I'll end up doing is I'll, I'll highlight uh, each area. So you've got the first, the second, the third, and the fourth, what we call, um, this is knowledge and application. So KA1 is the, um, the chemical concepts. KA2 is um, the application in new and familiar. KA3 is the she stuff. And KA4 is knowledge and understanding, communication, etc. So you'll get a grade for KA1, 2, 3, and 4. It'll be somewhere between A and E. And then once you look at it all together at the end, then that'll tell you where you sit in terms of A plus to E minus. I highly doubt anyone will be getting an E minus. Um, so if you want to look for the rubric, there it is. I'm telling you, when I write an assignment, you'll see instead of me just printing out the rubric and all that sort of stuff, I'm just going to say I'm going to assess in this assignment KA 1, 2, 3, and 4. If you're talking about your deconstruction and design prac, then you're going to be assessing IAE 1, 2, 3, and 4, and KA 1 and 2. You're dropping out the highly effective new and familiar contexts and the communication, uh, the she stuff. However, if you're thinking of the deconstruction and design for maybe the stage twos, especially with the olive oil prac, I could probably even justify putting KA2 in there. Because if you've really gone out of the way and found some of the more complex ways to investigate virgin olive oils, then yeah, you can change that up. Anyway, that's where the rubric is. It's in your subject outline. So is all the stuff about the she. Find it and use it. There is nothing wrong with going to the subject outline, going to the science as a human endeavor investigation bit, and then um, finding one of the... Um, where is that stuff? Oh no, she was all the way at the top, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. What's down here is um, is not just the rubric, but also um, the she assessment. What's the word for it? Like description of how it should be. So it tells you in general what they're expecting. Um, they say here, based on the investigation, students um, must include, uh, based on the investigation, students prepare a scientific report which must include the use of scientific terminology and an introduction to identify the focus of the investigation and the key concepts of she that it links to. Um, for me, I ditch the introduction. I don't think it's necessary. And when it comes to she, you should be making that damn obvious in the she component of your assignment. So you could literally write collaboration and communication and put a bunch of stuff about that. And then you could write application limitation and put a bunch of stuff about that. Um, there's no need to say, I'm going to talk about communication and collaboration later on in this report and then say the same thing down the bottom. I think it's wasting words. So uh, even though it says you must have a introduction and it mentions a conclusion, uh, I'm happy for you to do away with that because I think those are words that can be spent either on technical chemistry or physics or on science as a human endeavor. And having said that, uh, all my materials passed through moderation um, last year. So don't worry about the introduction or the conclusion. Put them if you want, but uh, it is not necessary. Uh, okay, um, the word limit. You've got 1,500 words if you're a stage two student, but uh, yeah, if you're stage one, you've got 1,000 words. And what I literally do is draw a line. I will not mark anything under that line. So you need to, um, you need to make sure you're below the limit. There are certain things that don't count towards the limit, but they're fairly limited. 
It's different in a PRAC report. When you go to a PRAC report, uh, so that's the skills and apps task, that's tests. Is this the, yeah, practical investigations. And it's kind of, it, it, it's the same for both chemistry and physics. Only the following sections of the report are included in the word count, introduction, analysis, evaluation, conclusion, and justification. So there are parts of PRAC reports that you can write tons and tons on and doesn't count towards your word count. I mean, I downgrade students if they fill their risk assessment with 12 pages of information cut and pasted from an MSDS. So, you know, don't go over the top. But uh, when it comes to the she task, pretty much everything counts. And if you go over the limit, then you will get a line drawn. And when there's no introduction or conclusion, that might, if there's evidence that could be used to upgrade you in a rubric that's below that line, it's just not going to be considered, which is a bad thing. It'll be like it was never there. And because of that, it's important to make sure that, uh, yeah, you, you stick to that word limit. And I keep getting asked the question, um, if I allow the whole 10% thing. Look, I heard about the 10% thing when I was in school. It's like Slender Man. It, it, it's, it's an urban myth. It doesn't occur. It, it doesn't exist. 5G doesn't cause coronavirus and you can't go 10% over the word limit. It's like saying you could go 10% over the speeding limit and you're not breaking the law. It's simply not true. There is no, there is no 10% leeway. Um, I don't allow it, and no one else is supposed to either. Right, enough on the subject outline. Uh, so the key points are, look for the she concepts at the top. So we go right up here. Science is a human endeavor. Down to down, there's a little p picture of a person there. Science inquiring skills. There, this, read this. Read it and, and, and you don't have to memorize it. There's no, the only thing you have to memorize is C-C-D-I-A-N-L. You need to know what C-C-D-I-A-N-L means for both subjects. But you don't need to memorize the elaborations or the content that's above it, but it's good to be familiar with it because it's going to help you shape your she task towards the end state of being a report on the impact of science on society as conducted by humans that do the research. That's what it's all about. It's about linking the humans that do the research to society, their impact on society and, and how it's uh, improved conditions or changed things or influenced something, uh, whatever. That's why it's always important to choose a topic which is well published. Because if you choose something really hard or really obscure, then you're setting yourself up for failure possibly because you may not find sufficient amount of information to be able to present good content. Okay, enough about the subject outline. You really do need to familiarize yourself with these documents. Um, this is your Bible. Everything you need to know is in this. The key point being that when we get down to the subject material, like uh, global warming for example, um, it tells you what you need to know and it also tells you what's going to be in the exam or what could possibly be in the exam. After every subject, you should be going along on the left-hand column and ticking off each thing. And then every time you, you have something that you can't do, you then go and find some questions on it and sort it out, or you come and speak to the teacher and get it sorted. Um, so being familiar with the subject outline helps you to make sure that you've covered off on all the areas. Okay, enough on that. That's 15 minutes of me crapping on about a subject outline. So yeah, she at the top uh, of the document almost. Um, the method in which the she task is kind of supposed to be written with the restrictions like the word limit, mostly all the way down the bottom and then on the second last page, the rubric, knowing that I will assess KA one, two, three and four across all of the subjects and all of the stages. It is the evidence in those areas and how your evidence stacks up against the language that's in the rubric which will assist in determining your final score.